how they can affect your parrot. Initially this video was going to be about a bunch of different common training mistakes, but upon kind of sorting it out and figuring out what I was going to talk about, I realized that punishment in of itself is an important enough topic to make a video all on its own. So there's only two real major types of punishments, and that's positive punishment and negative punishment. There are lots of tiny sub-factors within those two categories, but those are the two main subjects in which all of them fall under. So what positive punishment is, is adding a stimulus to the environment that is going to reduce the repetition of a behavior. For parrots, this is usually spraying them with a bottle, shaking them when they bite your hand, or yelling at them. Negative punishment is removing something from an environment to reduce the repetition of a behavior. When it comes to birds, this can be taking away treats and hiding them behind your hand. This can be taking your hands away because they're nibbling at your hands too aggressive. You are removing something that the bird wants from the environment to, in the hopes that they will reduce that behavior in the future. Now the word punishment in and of itself comes with a lot of negative tendencies. When you think of a punishment, you think of hitting something or yelling at it and causing a very stressful, strenuous situation for all the animals or the people involved. In behavioral science, that's not what punishment means. Punishment just means anything that is going to reduce the repetition of a behavior. And that doesn't always mean hurting or stressing out your animal. So there are some forms of punishment in behavioral terms that does work to reduce behaviors on parrots. It has to. If there was nothing to reduce the repetition of a behavior, then you would constantly be stuck with behavioral problems and you would get nowhere. Punishments do work on parrots if you use the correct ones. So I'm going to start off here by explaining why positive punishments generally do not work on parrots. Remembering that positive punishment means adding a stimulus to an environment that's going to reduce the repetition of a behavior, such as spraying a water bottle, flailing your hand around to shake them, or yelling at them. These forms of punishment work on other animals is because you're pushing them into a state where they're either scared or they're afraid or they're stressed and they want to get away from the stimulus that you're putting in there, whether it's a spray bottle or you're yelling or just an angry tone. You're creating a situation that is unpleasant that the animal wants to avoid and so it's going to start making the connections of what is happening and how to avoid that situation in the future. This type of punishment as a whole is faulty because the only way that they work is by inducing fear and by the threat being there. If you're not there to implement the punishment, the behavior is very likely to occur when you are not there. Like if you want your cat not to jump on the couch and the only threat is you spraying a bottle, if you suddenly aren't there to spray the bottle, they'll probably go back on the couch when you're not there. The problem with these is that it doesn't actually resolve the behavioral problem, it just gives a temporary stop to it in that moment. It doesn't tell the animal why that behavior isn't working, and it doesn't tell the animal what else to do instead. There's also a lot of other faults with the fact that it is based off of fear and off of stress that can have long-lasting health effects, and that can create a lot of aversiveness and a lot of lack of willingness to learn and an undesire to participate with you and just general mistrust. Those are all behavioral facts. Those are all based on years and years of studies. That's not a matter of opinion. That's just what happens when you utilize those types of training. Now there are some animals where you can use those sorts of training and you will see some degree of results. You'll see changes, you'll see behavior stopping. It's true, it will happen. You will see those behaviors happening. They don't have long lasting effects, but you will see changes. When it comes down to parrots, the reason why you physically can't get away with using those is because of the type of animal that they are. Parrots are a prey species. That means that they have very strong fight or flight responses and their entire lives are very much focused around survival. So when you're introducing a positive punishment, adding a stimulus to the environment to reduce a behavior, you're completely relying on that animal's sense of fear to tell them not to do it. When it comes to parrots and how extreme their fear responses are, it completely shuts down. When a parrot gets scared, when most animals get scared beyond a certain threshold, their brain stops learning. It will physically shut down because it's only in one mode and that's fight or flight. Its brain is only focused on keeping itself safe and making sure it's going to get out of the situation alive. And in some animals you can get away with this because their brain doesn't shut down that fast and it isn't a super flighty prey animal that is so focused on its survival that it's not prepared to learn anything in that moment. It is only focused on getting away and being safe. Some animals have a much higher threshold where you can get away with implementing a little bit of fear and they will respond accordingly and still pick up some degrees of learning. However, in super flighty prey animals like parrots are, the brain will completely shut down and you will get zero learning occurring. So when you're going ahead and you have a bird that's screaming and let's say you spray them with a bottle, the bird isn't learning in that moment. The bird 
is making associations and they're associating you and spraying them in the face, they're not associating screaming with anything else that happened because the punishment happened after the behavior occurred. The only connections that can be made during that moment of fear is the things that are happening at that exact moment that the fear is occurring. The bird wasn't scared when it was screaming, it was scared when you sprayed it with the bottle. So you and the bottle and the bird are the only things in that moment that are being registered. And the bird is making a connection that you coming near it with that bottle are terrifying. That is the only connection that's going to be made here. They aren't correlating the screaming with the behavior that has occurred afterwards, which was you spraying them with the bottle. The only things it's picking up at that point in time are things that are going to help it in the future. So it's picking up that that bottle is scary, it's a threat, and it doesn't want to be near it, and it may be picking up that you are a threat, and you are scary, and you are something not to be played with. You are not something that they want to engage with. It's learning those things in order to keep itself safe in the future. So that way, if it doesn't go near you, it can't be sprayed with the bottle. If it doesn't go near that bottle, it can't be sprayed. Those are the connections that the bird is making at that point in time. It doesn't matter what behavior it was doing beforehand, it doesn't care, it doesn't know, because it doesn't relate those things as being a part of its survival. Let's use another example. Let's say the bird's sitting on your hand and it bites your finger and you shake it as a response to get it to stop. Sure, the behavior stops in that moment, you've made them unbalanced and they've had to take their beak off of you and realign where they are, or maybe they flew off and left because they felt unstable, they didn't feel safe, they felt threatened, so they left the situation. They chose flight as a part of that fight or flight response. The issue in this situation is that the bird is now no longer going to trust your hand because it is associating your hand with being unstable and being unsafe, and it doesn't resolve why the bird bit you in the first place. Did the bird bite you because they already had a history of not trusting your hand and felt that you were going to shake them and decided to bite you as a result of that? Did they bite you because you were making weird noises that they thought were an aggressive display? Did they bite you simply because there are hormonal imbalances or health problems? When you're going ahead and just punishing a behavior for occurring, you're not figuring out why that behavior happened and actually giving them a solution to the problem. There is no alternatives for them to do, you aren't showing them what's correct, you're just telling them no and giving them no other feedback. And feedback is really important for learning because that's how you know to do something different. If you aren't shown what else to do, you're just going to shut down or you're going to keep repeating the behavior anyways because it's naturally reinforcing for you to do so. So because of this really tuned in fear response that parrots have, anytime you're adding fear into a situation or discomfort or stress, in order to produce a response, you're really just shutting down their capacity to learn and not resolving the problem at all. They're not picking up information, they're not learning anything, you're not teaching them anything except for to be afraid and to be afraid of you, to be afraid of the objects that you're using, it's not going to work. The only type of positive punishment that can work is one that occurs directly as a result of the behavior. So say you didn't want the bird chewing on the wall, and they bit the wall and you had put lemon juice on it, and now they bit the wall and got this nasty taste in their mouth. That's a direct relation to something that they did, and it's a direct cause for the punishment. The behavior that the bird did instigated the punishment itself. That's the only type of learning that can really occur by implementing positive punishment because it's a direct result of the behavior that they did. It's not an external force applying something onto them. Still in those situations, you do need to encourage the proper behaviors to occur. So yes, they bit the wall, it tasted like lemon, so they stopped, but they don't know what else to do. You need to give them something else to chew on or you need to give them something else to play with. Otherwise, they still don't know what else to be doing, they just know that what they're doing isn't working. By providing those alternatives and showing them what is correct to do, you're giving them the, the capacity to learn, you're showing the right route to take, and you're setting them up for a lot more success. So we've established that you can't apply stimulus to an environment to get a real result with reducing a behavior from occurring. So what do you do instead? That's a really easy answer, is you take things away. You're not inducing fear, you're not inducing excessive stress, all you're doing is going, you did this, so the thing that you want is gone. And they're going to start making those connections that I did this, this thing left. The reason why this works is because you're not inducing fear and you're not creating excessive stress. So the brain isn't shutting down. The brain is sitting there trying to figure out why the thing that it wanted left. And it's going to start to calculate what went on and they're going to start to analyze the environment. Because they're not shutting their brains down and going, oh, I'm scared, I need to leave, and just fight or flight, pick one, go. 
they're going to have a much calmer state of mind, they're going to be in the headspace for learning, and the brain is going to start firing off, figuring out what to do. The easiest example of this is when a bird is chewing your fingers. If you've got a really playful conure and they're trying to figure out how hard to chew, they really like playing with your hands, they're having lots of fun, they're getting a lot of enrichment out of it, it's very reinforcing. But when the bird bites your hand too much, if you just slowly take them away and put them behind your back, the thing that was fun, which was playing with your hands, is now gone. There's no stress, there's no fear, it's just a consequence to the action that was caused by their own behavior. The bird was nibbling your fingers, you didn't like it, your hands went away. The bird's going to learn that in order to continue to nibble your fingers, they can't use excessive pressure, or they can't nibble them at all, depending on what standards you've set there. This is also working because you're showing them what works and what doesn't. Your hands are there so long as the bird is being calm and so long as they're nibbling gently, and your hands disappear as soon as the biting gets to be too much. There they're seeing what's working, and they're seeing what isn't. Anytime you use an aversive in your training, it is a very slippery slope. An aversive simply means anything that the animal is going to try to avoid, something that's unpleasant, something that they don't want to be around. When you're using an aversive stimulus, something that is going to deter the animal from behaving in a certain way, something that is going to induce fear or an unpleasant feeling that's going to cause them to go the other way, there's a lot of downfalls. While in the moment that you have applied that aversive, it may seem like the behavior has stopped, you yelled at them, they stopped screaming, you shook them, they stopped biting, it doesn't solve the core of the problem, it doesn't establish why the behavior occurred in the first place, and it certainly doesn't last very long. There's tons of studies that explain why using aversives in training have bad results. And they can have anything from massively increased stress levels that can lead to health problems, to simply just being mistrustful and having very unreliable behavior. Until you actually resolve the root of a problem, the behavior will not change. It doesn't matter how much you instill fear into an animal, if you do not resolve why the behavior is occurring and you do not give alternatives to do instead, the behavior is simply going to keep coming back because they don't know any better. And in many cases, the behavior that they're doing is already self-reinforcing. Screaming is really fun for birds, chewing on furniture, chewing in general is really fun. So because these behaviors are already fun and enjoyable and reinforcing, when you apply fear and things to them afterwards, it's not doing what you think it is. Because the behavior is already reinforcing itself, the behavior is already occurring, it's you that's the negative thing. It's the spray bottle and you spraying it, or it's you and you shaking your hands, that's actually negative. It's not the behavior itself that is being negative and creating a situation that is fearful. It's not the bird's behavior that is making them fearful, it is what you are doing that is making them fearful. So all you're reinforcing is that fear and mistrust in you. You're not actually relating to the behavior that's occurring because the behavior has already been reinforced. The behavior wasn't the connection that was made there. The connections were all made with you and the fear that you were instilling. When you change that mindset of training and when you start removing things that are enjoyable and you start giving alternatives and solving the roots of behavior, that's when you start to see long-lasting results. Because now it's not a matter of just trying to stop something from happening. You're changing the root cause, you're solving the actual problem. So for attention screaming, you've given the birds new toys to play with, you've induced more foraging, you've changed up your enrichment routine. The bird is now fun, the bird is not stressed, the bird is having a grand old time in their cage. They don't need to scream for you anymore because they're enjoying enrichment on their own. You have a bird that's biting you, you've established that it's hormone based, and you've gone and you've changed the hours that they're sleeping, you've made their diet lower in fat, You've given them all these things to help regulate their hormones, maybe you had to go to the vet and get hormone shots, and now you've got a bird that's a lot more hormonally stable, and you've resolved the problem. A lot of the time, the behavior problems that you're seeing is just a result of a bigger problem. And when you sit there and you fight all the little results of things, you're not actually fighting the core issue. You're fighting all the little strands and filaments and things that are coming off of it. It doesn't stop the reason why things are happening, and so the behavior is just going to keep coming back. So you don't have to take it from me by any means, but I hope that this helped you guys in some way or another with some of the issues you might be having. It might help resolve some of the reasons why your training isn't going exactly the way that you want it to. There's lots of other resources on this. I'll link a bunch down in the description below for you guys to go read so you aren't just taking my word for it. I do always encourage you guys to do your own research and find good, reliable people to get your information from, people with credentials, people that have strong backgrounds in behavioral science, so that way you can understand why these things occur and have a better background on how to actually apply them in the future. But that's going to do it for today, so thank you guys so much for watching.